and welcome to Investment Trends. Today on the program, we're looking at investment promotion and we'll be talking to the Commissioner for Modernization and Corporate Strategy, Mr. Dingan Banda from ZRA. Now remember, we are looking at investment promotion and we want to find out what ZRA is doing in ensuring that they promote investments. Hello, welcome to the program. How are you? Fine, and how are you, Chilfia? I'm good, thank you. So before we get started, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who are wondering, uh, what is the role of ZRA in all this? How do you fit into this equation? Okay. ZRA is a key stakeholder in the investment promotion and um, facilitation value chain. As you may be aware, some of the investors, at the time they set up investments, they have to bring in machinery. Mm -hmm. And in terms of facilitating for that at the borders, ZRA is actively involved in ensuring that uh, the machinery comes in within the provisions of the investment uh, promotions and uh, the Zambia Development uh, Agency Act. So one way we try that at the border is to ensure that um, the uh, declarations for the imports are done in a very efficient way. We have web-based systems now called a SCUDA World. We also want to ensure that uh, the payments are made in an efficient way. As you may be aware, ZRA now has about 17 banks which are connected to the electronic payment system. And also we want to make sure that inspections, if we are to inspect the goods, have to be done in a very convenient way. We have uh, fixed scanners, you've heard of scanners. Yes. So inspections which used to take maybe about five hours for us to inspect, with the scanners now it just takes about five minutes. Okay. So from the trade facilitation point of view, we've created all these platforms which make it much more convenient now for any investor who brings the goods to ensure that the process is expedited at the, at the borders and uh, there are no uh, unnecessary delays. Okay. When it comes to now uh, having set up the investment inland, we have also created systems that, it ma that make it more convenient for any investor to comply with statutory obligations. These are uh, uh, obligations relating to payment of taxes, uh, obligations relating to filing of returns, obligations relating to facilitation of audits, and so forth. So these are platforms that we've put in place, and like I, if I'm to dwell more on the domestic taxes side, we have uh, put in place uh, the electronic filing of returns, meaning that uh, an investor doesn't need to leave their office okay. to go and fulfill tax obligations. Everything is done in the office. Everything is done in the office. What we are saying is that um, paying taxes is a statutory obligation, but it's not a core business for the investor. Mm -hmm. The investor's core business is to uh, uh, focus on the business for which they've secured an investment license. So if it means going into uh, setting up of an industry, that's their core business. If it's manufacturing, that's their core business. Tax is a statutory obligation. So as they fulfill the statutory obligations, we want to make it convenient. Okay. They don't need to leave their premises. We are taking our services to their premises. So that's what we've done through the electronic-based services that we've put in place. So in a nutshell, uh, from the domestic taxes side, We've put in place all these uh, uh, platforms, uh, systems for electronic filing, electronic payment, and also for, uh, for systems now, among others, I must mention that in case of an audit, we don't go in and take computers from, uh, from, from uh, an investor. All we do is get the information that we want to analyze and leave the investor to work in their premises. So we've set up all these facilities that uh, facilitate that platform. All right. So then now Zambia is known by a lot of people, you know, around the world for its ease of doing business. And um, you've mentioned and highlighted some of the strategies that you've put in place as ZRA to make sure that this becomes a reality. Um, what about for those who are uh, going into other countries, crossing over into other countries, bringing in goods into Zambia? How easy is it for them to be, you know, to be able to to succeed and to be able to, to, to make profit from what they're doing as they bring those goods, and whatever it may be, whatever good it may be into the country. Okay, as you may be aware, Zambia is a signatory number of trade protocols, and uh, even within the study community and COMESA. So one of the key aspects which we work on and ensure we facilitate is that um, uh, where goods have been issued, for example, with a certificate of origin, okay. let's say from South Africa, to indicate that they have to be admitted in our environment uh, duty-free. We are um, making sure that those goods are facilitated in that environment without any further encumbrances. But also from that perspective, we do realize that um, the current certificates of origin, for example, is a manual document, yes. meaning that uh, if you are to bring in goods that uh, require to be admitted under the free trade area, at the time you come to the border, you must have proof that here's a certificate of origin physically from the other issuing authority. 
But we are working on modalities now to ensure that we migrate towards the electronic certificates of origin. Meaning that once it's issued by an, an issuing authority, let's say in uh, another administration, we automatically receive it here. And you can access easily through that platform other facilities that we have, such as pre-clearance. Meaning that before the goods even come at the border, you can uh, physically, uh, I mean, you can uh, electronically um, uh, clear the goods uh, while the, 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 the whole physical transaction is still on the way. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the issues we're looking at, particularly for cross-board traders at a higher level. Mm -hmm. Now for the SMEs, because that's one area where um, I think most of the focus has not been, uh, has not, has not been uh, given the necessary due attention in the past. What we are doing is that for SMEs, we are now looking at solutions that will make it easier for them to do business across borders. Right now, most SMEs will start undertaking their transactions when they physically reach the border. Mm -hmm. But as an authority, part of the reforms we are doing is that we are putting in place um, uh, more uh, electronic-based solutions that we aim at bringing now the uh, mobile-based uh, clearance platform, whereby one should be able to declare the goods that are carrying on the mobile phone uh, before the physical arrive at the border, and if they have a mobile payment, they can pay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also the other aspects we're looking at is making it convenient. In the past, we've had cases where a lot of our, um, of our brothers and sisters were doing cross-border trade. Mm -hmm. When it comes to uh, making payments at the border, they have to probably to go and withdraw money from the nearest town. For example, move from Victoria Falls to go to Livingston to withdraw money and so forth. So we're trying now to bring a lot of payment platforms to the border itself. Mm -hmm. uh, that's in form of ATMs, but we're now moving into point of sale. So that even with your debit card, it should be easier for you to be able to undertake your transaction. And also the other aspect is the continued implementation of the simplified trade regime, which you know we're implementing under COMESA, mm -hmm. and uh, that gives further incentives to the SMEs to be able to access the various incentives uh, relating to uh, trade facilitation uh, right. with neighboring countries. And is there enough information going out to the entrepreneurs especially uh, to know that there are incentives available for them. For example, they open up uh, an industry or uh, a company in a rural area. Do they understand that they're able to benefit something? Do they understand there are certain uh, goods that they can bring into the country and they don't attract any taxes? Is the information going out there? Well, it's important that you've asked this question because the general perception out there is that um, tax incentives are only for foreigners mm -hmm. and, uh, and, uh, and uh, certain categories of investors. Um, which, which excludes, for example, the locals. We are responsible for administration of um, the tax incentives, as earlier indicated. And um, the general issue we've seen is that there's quite a big information gap uh, between what we know as public institutions, uh, ZRI, uh, our colleagues, ZDA, and so forth, and what a common entrepreneur out there knows with regards to tax incentives. So to answer your question, there's a lot of room for taxpayer education or public education on uh, what are the prevailing incentives, how can they access those incentives, and uh, most importantly also who is eligible for those incentives. Right. So uh, the starting point, um, uh, I can tell you, uh, Chilufe, it's a simple one. If you go to the ZDA website, it will tell you what incentives currently prevail. And depending on the industry you're in, which ones would you be, will be able to fit into? Mm -hmm. Are you going to produce in a, in, a, in a multi facility economic zone? Are you producing for priority sectors? Are you going to be a rural enterprise? Mm -hmm. And so forth. So there are incentives that are outlined for different categories. But it just takes, for a start, a simple effort of going to the website for ZDA or ZRI. You'll be able to find what incentives one can access. Mm -hmm. So it comes back to the issue of, um, uh, from the members of public, they should try to research more, to read, which is basically on our website. But also for us as public institutions, we try even through such platforms to educate the people so they know uh, what type of incentives that, uh, that, that they'll be eligible for. All right. Let's talk about your collaborations with the Zambia Development Agency, the Single Window Project. Tell us more about this. What is it about uh, for those people out there who don't seem to understand it? Okay, this, the single window is a very important concept. I'm sure you've heard, even from the head of state and uh, the seventh national development plan, the line of thought is now we should move from a sectorial approach, meaning that every government department operating in silos to an integrated one. So there should be workflow integration. What one institution does, if it's got an impact on another institution, there should be collaboration and sharing of information. So aspects to do with single window, if I'm to give you a background, a project such as the Mineral Valley Chain Monitoring Project is all a project that has come out of the regional concept of single window. Why am I saying that? When minerals are being exported, they pass through 
uh, the interests of various stakeholders. Minister of Mines will be interested in knowing what has been produced. Okay, ZRA will be interested in knowing what's the quality of this mineral, what is the taxable amount of mineral royalty from that perspective. Bank of Zambia will be interested from the economic uh, projection and balance of payment issues. CSO will be interested in knowing what is the production of mineral. So you can see the various stakeholders that are involved. Previously, we've all been operating in silos. That's why you find what situations where when one wants to know maybe figures on production for mines, you've got one institution, you have different figures and so forth. So one of the lines of thought has been that we integrate the workflow, meaning that when information is submitted, including to government, it should be easily shared and received by all government institutions. So out of that single window, that's how mineral value chain, among others, came because of the demand that government wants to know the quantity and the quality of the minerals as they pass through the value chain. Government was also interested in knowing um, the export permit process. We used, had, we used to have a manual export permit process where uh, the permit can be used, that's a risk, can be used at several uh, interventions. Right. But now we're saying one permit, once issued, it should be able to be seen and used by different stakeholders at the same time. So out of that element came the mineral value chain project. But again, you look at the various processes that involve integration among government agencies, those that are involved in trade logistics. So at the borders, if you are importing goods that are of interest to Zambia Bureau of Standards, that are of interest to Minister of Health, that are of interest to ZRA, how do we make sure that this organization uh, collaborate and share information without uh, subjecting the importer to a risk of having multiple inspections, multiple places where you have to queue up and pay various government uh, uh, fees, mm -hmm. uh, where you have to, you know, undergo processes in silos, you finish one process, when you're about to go, another one says stop, even me, I want to check, I've got a lot to do. So we are working on now what is called the single window project. This is a project by the government of Zambia. Now with regards to investments, what we are saying is that when an investor is issued an investment license, mm -hmm. it's for specific goods, for certain categories, that permit should ideally be integrated and linked to ZRA, okay? Such that when an importer now, the investor wants to import the goods, they don't need to go through a number of tedious processes now to have the permit validated. Right. The rebate confirmation should be an easier process through that. So that's one component which we're working with uh, the Zambia Development Agency on the single window, and they'll come under what is called phase two of the single window. Right. But that notwithstanding, you may wish to know that under phase one for single window, we've already connected the Zambia Bureau of Standards. Previously, it was a situation where at Chirundu border where we've connected, they would come physically to our offices, get the declarations, take them to the offices, read them, and bring them back. Meanwhile, an importer is waiting. But now, when a declaration is registered by a clearing agent, it automatically goes to Bureau of Standards. They're able to see it instantly and work on it. In the same way, ZRA is also able to work on this component. So we are now planning on the second phase where we'll connect Zambia Bureau of Standards to all the 28 stations that are automated through what we call a central processing uh, center system. So uh, that's one component, and then we're also going to connect um, uh, the key component, which is the uh, Minister of um, Agriculture, the issue import and export permits for controlled commodities. Mm -hmm. So under that one, we've already started a pilot and we have 11 companies. So under this pilot of the single window, uh, the 11 companies, these are the major companies involved in the agriculture uh, uh, supply chain. They are applying for permits electronically and also getting uh, permits manually. Okay. Yeah, so Minister of Agriculture right now, as I'm talking, they've already uh, received over 200 applications of uh, export permits and import permits, which they are able now to work on electronically. And that creates a transparent process in the value chain. Mm -hmm. You know who has applied for permit, is this uh, the commodity allowed or not, and so forth. Unlike in the past where permits were being issued all over the country mm -hmm. uh, in a manual form and in a very decentralized way. Oh. So those are some of the reforms that we, we work on. Right. So many interventions and you know programs that are being put in place to ensure that everything is running smoothly. But just tell me, Commissioner, the importance of having a, um, an organized system running properly, such as the one you're trying to implement with our other various government departments. What does this do for the economy? What does this do for the, um, the image of the country when people want to come to, to Zambia to invest? I think the starting point is uh, what's the ultimate objective we want to attain? I think uh, uh, there's a general perception that uh, public service is, uh, is um, usually associated with bureaucracy, inefficiency, and, and so forth. I think that's a key factor I want to take away. 
we want to bring in an aspect where when you are dealing with a public service, uh, the service should be in an efficient way, uh, it should be little room for bureaucracy, and there should be transparency and most important accountability. We are bringing an aspect of accountability and transparency also because we would like to eliminate opportunities for corruption among others in these processes. Corruption is a cost to any economy. So if you have processes that are efficient, that are working uh, uh, to the benefit of the stakeholders, among others, we are eliminating room for any more practices because now the process is transparent, everybody can see what's happening, there's accountability and so forth. That, to some extent, raises confidence in terms of the country's perception uh, on, 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 on its governance systems, on its, uh, on its environment, and, and on its uh, uh, handling of, of, of corporate governance, among others. So we are focusing more on putting in place systems. Where there are no systems, anything goes. So the starting point is let's build systems that will promote accountability, that will promote transparency, systems that will enable us to have uh, benchmarks in terms of uh, international reputation to say Zambia's put in place systems that anybody can attest to that they are promoting uh, the, the key tenets of, of, of governance. So for us, is we need to bring in this system to the public sector. Right now, like we said, a lot of processes are in manual, uh, they're in isolated, so we're saying we want to move away from manual, we want to work in an integrated way. That's what the Seventh National Development Plan talks about, an integrated approach. That's what we need to bring on board. So we think this is a, a, a building block for, for a better Zambia, in our view. Yeah. Um, as, as we, you know, come to the end and, and wind up our program, Commissioner, just highlight some of the incentives that uh, the, the business people locally, the local investors can get once they come through, they pay their taxes or they invest in a certain industry. And I know also you, you have a, a tax rebate going on, so you can also talk about that. And also for the um, international investors um, as well, as they come through, they start something. What in, um, incentives do they have? Okay, the, the first one, I have to market the amnesty because I think it's a very <laughs> rare <laughs> opportunity. <That's right. laughs> yeah, we, 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 you've, yeah, I mean, we, we, we don't issue amnesties uh, every year or every right. five years. It's once in a lifetime, probably, uh, opportunity. So the amnesty now that we're running, we started on 24th April. It's ending on 31st July 2017. This is a, uh, um, a mandate which CG has exercised, whereby it can waive the interest and penalties on all those who have outstanding obligations. We know that most local, even foreign investors, some of them have been avoiding, let's say, coming into ZRI offices because they have accrued interest and penalties on their accounts. But we are saying, come to our offices now. We will waive the interest and penalties. You only have to account for the principal. And in the event that you don't have the resources immediately to account for the principal, you can still apply for a deferred payment plan. We call it a time to play agreement, mm -hmm. whereby you should be able now to um, uh, um, uh, pay the principal by 31st December uh, 2017. I'm emphasizing on this because um, our expectation is that uh, come 2017, and they just to, I mean 2018, January, we will uh, uh, step up our enforcement activities. And as you may be aware, we are moving away from an environment where you do one thing in one division of ZRA, maybe import things, domestic taxes doesn't know, because we're connecting our systems, we'll be talking to each other. We are moving a step further. We are also integrating with other third party sources. Okay. So meaning that you may do a transaction in another sector of the economy, ZRA will be able to know. So in short, we're limiting the room through which some people would run away from tax obligations. So it's very important that people take advantage of this amnesty, because once they are caught, when we start the intensified in enforcement, uh, we'll be in a, a, a much more punitive mode than, mode than, than, than we're currently in. Yeah, sure. Then uh, in terms of the incentives, well, like I said, the simple part is first of all to read the ZRA website and the, um, and the ZDA website. These websites clearly outline what the incentives are there. Like we said, uh, for different categories, including locals, are not, ex uh, not an exception. Mm -hmm. There are those who are bringing investments above 500,000. There are those targeted for SMEs. There are those invested investments for those who want to uh, set up in multi-facility economic zone. The investments for those who want to, uh, to invest in rural areas. Can you imagine? Because the level of poverty in the rural areas are, are, are quite high. Uh, you look at the latest um, 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 uh, statistics. 
So the government is providing these incentives. So if you set up a factory in the rural area or any business there, you are entitled to certain incentives, which include five years uh, without paying any, any, any taxes. Uh, your dividends also, you don't pay any taxes on that. So imagine, it doesn't get better another, any better than that. So the whole essence is that we need to continue uh, 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 informing the people, educating the people on what incentives are there, and the whole intention for government uh, uh, setting up such incentives. Well, Commissioner, thank you very much for giving us time to speak to you. It's been a pleasure having you on the program. Good luck with uh, everything else you're doing at ZRA. Uh, thank you, Chirupa. That's my pleasure to have you. All right. Thanks. Well, that was the Commissioner for Modernization and um, Corporate Strategy at the Zambia Revenue Authority, Mr. Dingan Banda. And he has just highlighted, shared with us, and informed us what exactly ZRA is doing to ensure that they also promote investment and encourage as many people as possible to pay their taxes and do their part. Um, you have heard... From him, he's talked about the tax rebate, so make sure that you, you act now before they start um, coming for you. This is where we wrap up the program. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time on Investment Trends. Bye-bye.